Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough, it's never 10 minutes, and it's never 10 minutes wasted. In the workshop this week, we're taking a look at small bandsaws again. It's coming up next. So about six months ago, I bought myself this little guy, a cheap little bandsaw from Aldi. Uh, I made a couple of videos about it, there's a link up there and a couple more down there in the description. And it's been fantastic uh, for an 80 pound bandsaw, 80 quid. This is nothing short of astonishing. Uh, costs me 80 quid to fill my van with diesel or the car with petrol. To be able to get a bandsaw for that kind of money is uh, uh, absolutely astonishing. Um, it is very much down the you know cheap and cheerful end of the market. Lots of pressed tin. The table and the fence arrangement is all a little bit uh, as shaky as my voice at the moment, actually. Uh, but it has taken absolutely everything that I've thrown at it uh, over the last uh, six months completely in its stride. It's cut hardwoods. It's cut softwoods. It's cut aluminium. It's cut brass. Uh, it's cut whatever that horrible brittle material is that they make uh, socket back boxes out of. Uh, it's done absolutely everything uh, without a murmur. It's never stalled, it's never jammed. Um, somebody asked me in the comments uh, how, how frequently I change the blades. Oh, actually I've never changed the blade on it. It's, uh, it's running off the original blade from uh, six months ago uh, and it has been abused horribly in ways that I would never admit to on video. Um, but it got me thinking, you know, what do you get if you spend a little bit more, if you want something a little bit better? Well, actually, well in all seriousness, what you get when you spend a little bit more is basically you get another one of these with a different badge on it at a slightly higher price. Um, in my original video I said this is the, the same as the Shepak, I think it's the BS20 that's sold through Screwfix stores here in the UK, but they, they sell it at £110 or thereabouts. Um, I don't know for sure if it's the exact same model, but it's very much out of the same mould that is sold here in the UK by uh, Machine Mart called Einhell. Again, very similar styling. Uh, and again, uh, one a little bit more again from Tool Station under the Draper brand, the Draper badge. I don't know if they're made by the same factory elsewhere, uh, but, but this one is certainly a Shepak. Uh, uh, and I was curious about what you'd get then how much more do you need to spend to get something significantly better in this kind of 8-inch bandsaw category. Now I've been mulling this over for a little while trying to figure out what constitutes a premium bandsaw. I know there's a Jet one that's about 180 quid. Um, it's quite old-fashioned looking. looks like the old sort of telephone handset if you remember those. And then I remembered that Axminster had this little guy in their hobby series. Um, it used to be called the Light Trade series and then the Industrial. Now they've got a hobby series and an Industrial. And this is the hobby series, it's their entry level bandsaw. Yeah. But supposedly a premium bandsaw with a cast iron table, solid steel chassis uh, and a good fence. And so I thought I'd buy one just to see how it compared to my cheap and cheerful little Aldi bandsaw. Now it'll come as no surprise to find that um, given the, the specs are so similar, that these two are physically so similar as well. 200mm uh, from the blade to the throat and 80mm depth of cut in each one. Uh, unusually, it's actually a 350 watt uh, motor in the Aldi and only 250 in the Axminster. Um, pressed metal fence and an uh, excuse me, pressed metal table and an aluminium fence in the Aldi. Cast iron and a solid fence in the Axminster with a T-track on the front uh, for those of you guys who like to make little jigs and things. Um, around the back you've got the usual array of ports, uh, extraction port down the bottom, uh, locking and uppy downy uh, for the blade guides on the same on each one and tracking uh, for the upper wheel uh, here and here and of course tensioning on the top. Uh, very similar, almost out of the same mould to be honest. Um, uh, the, the big difference uh, with the expensive is of course the cast iron table. Uh, they also say that it's a, uh, a copper wound motor which uh, gives it a longer life. Uh, I thought 
all induction motors were copper wound, but perhaps that's just my lack of knowledge coming through on motors and all things engineering. You'll have noticed there's a little wooden wedge under the back of the RV, that's because the bench is actually badly twisted. I will get around to changing this bench top this year, I promise. Thanks Mr. Sword does come with a very, very, very good manual. Um, uh, it's it's one of the you know, it's, it's it's a bit sad really that here we are this far into the 21st century and I'm about to commend somebody for producing a well photographed well printed manual with clear color pictures so full marks to Axminster for actually producing a nicely produced uh, and, and very well thought out uh, manual and user guide on how to set up your bandsaw um, in fact it's so good. I would probably suggest using this manual to set up your uh, Aldi bandsaw if it's your first one. Uh, there's a link down in the uh, uh, in the description to uh, an online copy of this. Uh, the Axminster has been set up as per the manual and as per the instructions. So let's uh, get a little bit of wood through them and see how they cut. Now, one of the first things I did when I got the uh, little Aldi bandsaw. Uh, was a little bit unfair. I wanted to make a, a really thin cut with it just to see how it handled it. Um, about a sixteenth of an inch, a millimetre and a half or so, not quite veneer thinness but not far off and again just in a little piece of uh, oak that I've got here. So I've set up the same test again. Uh, bear in mind as well, poor little bandsaw here is on its first blade, the original one still, and it's cut all kinds of nasty things whereas this one is brand new. Uh, both of them have a six tooth per inch blade as standard by the way. Um, but let's uh, let's give this a whirl. Now I've got to say that fence does inspire confidence. Uh, it's really a very nice, very good, clean cut. Um, just out of interest, let's see how the uh, the eighty quid Aldi with a six month old blade does. So short answer, yeah the Aldi pants were just remarkably well considering it's on a six month old blade but definitely the, uh, uh, the, the sturdiness of the fence and table won through the Axminster uh, getting a, a, a strip of around about a millimetre thin all the way along whereas the best the Aldi could do uh, at the moment is about a millimetre and a half, sixteenth of an inch or so, but still not bad. Um, the other trick I tried uh, when I set up the Aldi bandsaw originally was to do uh, try and rip through three inches of oak with a stock blade, and I'm going to try that again uh, with the Axminster. Uh, obviously not sixteenth of an inch thick, that wouldn't really be fair, but let's see how it does. So there we are, three inches of oak uh, ripped through without any sort of murmur really with a stock blade. Normally you'd have a, a few fewer teeth I think than that. Uh, it's not bad, I need a bit of cleaning up with a hand plane. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, at pretty much capacity that's doing uh, really remarkably well. Um, so in conclusion, let's have a little recap here. Both saws are perfectly capable machines, surprisingly so in the Aldi's case for the money. Um, yep, fence is a bit tinny uh, uh, and table is all a bit sort of wibbly wobbly uh, and yet it's done everything I've thrown at it for the last six months or more. Uh, not quite capable of getting as thin a cut um, uh, as the Axminster but then it is six, month old, six months old and the blade has been horribly abused. Uh, the Axminster lovely thin uh, almost a veneer sort of cut as you'd expect from a cast iron table and a much more solid fence system. It has to be said as well it is also well if you were lucky enough to pick up the Aldi for uh, about £70 it is almost three times the price uh, and that's the bit that concerns me really. I'd have no hesitation whatsoever in recommending the Axminster saw. Uh, the only concern is uh, when you've got the mitre fence added into the mix as well, it takes you over that psychological £200 mark. Um, 
then you've got to start thinking a bit more carefully about will the capacity of the bandsaw be enough going forwards? Does it give you enough sort of room for growth? Um, would you be better served at looking to spend a little bit more than this to get the next in the series, the next Axminster bandsaw? The hobby bandsaw is the 10 inch HBS 250, uh, so 10 inches across the, the throat and 120 mil depth of cut. Uh, but there's also a record power bandsaw, uh, which is a, a which is a sort of premium 10 inch bandsaw, as they call it, uh, a small bandsaw. Uh, again, same capacity, 10 inches, uh, 250mm and 120mm depth. Uh, and that's available around about sort of 260, 270 pounds, so not that much more than this. Um, as long as you're happy with the capacity, then this is a fine machine. Uh, if you need something that has a solid tail and a solid fence. I've got to confess, I don't use the fence much on the Aldi bandsaw. I do most of my work on it freehand because that's how I use it. Um, I'm not a you know, resawing or veneer cutting kind of guy. It's just not the kind of woodwork I do. So this one has served me very well. And I've got to say, I'm totally in two minds as to which one of these I'm going to keep because obviously I don't need both of them. Um, uh, and the same decision has to lie with you, ultimately, I'm afraid. Um, I can't make the, the $64,000 decision for you. It's all about which one suits your needs best. I have no hesitation in recommending either of them. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you've got to decide based on what you think your future needs will be. Um, all I'll say is that if you're just looking for a first bandsaw to dip a toe in the water to see if it works with your workspace and your workflow, then you can't really go wrong with a sort of 70 or 80 pound Aldi. Whereas if you know what you want and you know you want, you want a solid cast iron fence and table, uh, cast iron table and fence uh, 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 and you know that your needs are going to be fairly modest and served by a small bandsaw then again no hesitation whatsoever in recommending the Axminster. Uh, I hope this uh, little video has helped you reach a decision of one sort or another. If you found it interesting do share it out amongst your friends and give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe check back next Friday when there's always something new up at noon. But that's all for now and see you next time. Take care.